Have you ever wanted to create an awesome D&D battle in your campaign that would rival the Battle of Helm's Deep or the Siege of King's Landing? But when you actually went out of your planning and played the battle during your D&D session, it turned out to be kind of boring or maybe even kinda cool, but not what you did expect. Well, in this video I will try to help you create some epic large-scale battles for your D&D campaign. First, let's establish what is the point of having a battle, both by military standards and in literature. Well, battle is an armed clash of forces waging war, usually having a great impact on the course of a war, campaign or an operation. Now we can talk about two most popular existing types of battles that you probably heard about. First, the defensive battle. It is, as the name suggests, a battle that you fight in defense of something. Its goal is usually to push back enemy advances. In this type of battle, things such as barricades, fortifications and natural barriers play a key role. For example, let's say that the army of an enemy general is advancing on the kingdom's capital. However, to reach the city walls, the enemy army has to cross a river. Let's say that the bridge that the army needs to cross is located around there, and this is the place where both armies will meet. The defenders may try different tactics to win this battle, but let's say that what they did is placing explosives under the bridge, aiming to detonate them during the army's crossing, essentially splitting the force into two. Then. The defenders will come out of their hiding, stopping the army's advance. Now, the offensive battle's goal is kind of opposite of the defensive one. Its goal is to assure control over some part of land, forcing the defenders into retreat or the attacker completely destroying the defending forces, whichever one is better. Now, it's worth to know that each type of battle has many different and uh, unique tactics. So, if you're a DM who hopes to achieve realism in your D&D battles, I recommend you to open a list of battle tactics, for example from Wikipedia. With the support of that list, you could pick now the tactic which you think that is the most cool or fitting the particular situation. It's also worth noting that you as a DM should let your players come up with their own battle tactic, no matter how stupid you think it is. Having some NPC military general say to them, you have to do this and this, might be unfun for your players because they will feel like you're trying to strip their agency away from them. Though it's worth noticing that you can have some NPC suggest ideas, like a scout reporting that oh, in the western side of a besieged cities there are some weaknesses and the players could later use this information to come up with their own ideas on how they want to exploit this weakness in the enemy fortifications. Or you could just give your players some battle assignments as quests. For example, you need to destroy the supply carriage that supplies the besieged city. I will talk about this a little later in the video. So, now that I've briefly covered what the battle is in a military terminology, let's cover why we even have battles in writing. First, Battles are just really cool action scenes that may create a specific feeling or just be entertaining for your players or readers or maybe viewers. Like the Siege of Helm's Deep was one of the most epic scenes in the history of cinema, while the description of the Western Front in All Quiet on the Western Front was really dark and brutal. Secondly, a battle can provide a unique set of challenges for the characters present in it. That may be hard or even impossible to implement without the presence of a battle. Now, let's implement all of these things in practice by creating a battle system that will present a unique set of challenges for the party while following the military rules of battle 
and being entertaining. So, I'm a big fan of making the battle only a background of your player's actions. It's because you have to remember that in the end the players usually want to be very important and they usually like to play a key role in most if not all the battles in the campaign. So how do we make that happen? Well, by making our battles just a background. As I've suggested, let's go back to our example and let's say that our players were the ones that were tasked to plant the explosives and destroy the bridge. And you could use that to throw at your players encounters like Oh, the enemy scouts patrol the bridge. You need to sneak in or just kill the enemy scouts completely. Or maybe during the fight with the scouts your explosive material is broke and you need now to seek for a different method of destroying the bridge. You could then task them with preparing the ambush and eliminating the commander of advancing forces, effectively crippling his last efforts to try and make any effective strike against the player's army. I've accidentally used this method in my first D&D campaign that I've ever run. The pieces were tasked to capture an enemy city. However, the scouts reported that the defenders of the city are too strong for the limited siege equipment that the player's army had. So my players decided to sneak into the city and open the city gates from inside, eliminating the gatekeepers and holding the gate until the main force would be able to reach it. Well, this was one of the most fun scenes from that entire campaign. And as you can see, it aligns almost perfectly with what I established as a good D&D battle. Now, I recommend you tasking the players with more than just opening the gates to make their success more varied. I will recommend you doing about three of those obligatory tasks and a couple of voluntary ones. Then make sure to make the ties of the battle proportional to the success in execution of their goals. If your players succeed in two of the obligatory tasks and none of the voluntary tasks, they win the battle, however at a great cost. Though, if your players did not manage to succeed at least two of the obligatory tasks, the battle is lost. How severe the loss will be is proportional to how little of the task the players succeeded in. The same method applies to the win, which is as great as the percentage of how many tasks the players have completed. Now, I don't understand that, not everyone would like that, because there are many players that want to lead an army into a great victory over their foes. It is a very popular fantasy with many wonderful characters like Aragorn, Stannis the Manis, or Dalinar Colin fitting into it. So how can we make this fantasy possible in D&D? Let's start with a statement that is crucial to the later answer. D&D is not Warhammer, and it's more about combat between small groups of characters than a whole large armies clashing in the middle of a field. But it can be kind of applied to large-scale battle battles by making character sheets for specific units in the battle and making your PC impact their stats. You can check out this system in the link in the description for absolutely free. For now, thanks for watching this video until the end, and if you want to help us make more videos like this one in the future, please smash the like and subscribe button and leave a comment. Thank you for watching.